G'day and welcome back to survival. The sun is rising, so I think it means now's the time to do some expansion. We're going to need more solar panels, but if we want to have them automated so that they're going to track the sun, we're going to need room for a timer block and a programmable block. And this little room is kind of feeling really, really cramped right now. So, in order to make a bit more space, I think we should tunnel out through this back wall. Get rid of this switch, since we can always replace it later. Cut through this block, and I think drilling into the mountain is going to be the best way to go, as it will give us plenty of space, but also, if I happen to bring any enemies back to base, it will be a safe place for us to have all of our stuff, because it won't be able to be damaged. Make sure I'm roughly mining in a straight direction. Even before we place down the programmable block and timer block, I think getting an arc furnace going would be a good idea. Right now we've just got the refinery running and we're running off battery power that's only got two solar panels to recharge them. That's not very much. So we're going to run out and I'd rather get as far as we can through the nickel, the cobalt, and the, and the iron, rather than running out and being stuck. So that's a bit more space, that's nice. We're also probably going to need to go mining for some more iron, because I don't think I got quite enough in order to build what I want to. Okay. Well, that's cleared out a bit of room, but if we just go a little bit further over here, that'll give us access to that conveyor. What I want to do first is get this arc furnace going, which is right there. So we'll attach that onto the back of the refinery. Yeah, like that'll work. What parts do I need for it? Need a bunch of steel plates, some construction components, large steel tubes, etc, etc. With the current situation, the Arc Furnace has some big benefits over the refinery. We don't need the huge numbers of components that are needed for refineries. And the Arc Furnace is slightly more power efficient and slightly quicker. So we'll get more bang for our power buck with it. With the Arc Furnace finished, let's get some of this nickel refining in it. Since we're going to need nickel and silicon, I think it is for solar panels. Yeah, nickel and sil silicon. And more nickel than silicon, and I think we've got things the other way around right now. We don't have much iron left, so let's refine the iron as well. Let's do it first, it won't take very long. And then we need to make a bunch of steel plates, a bunch of construction components, some large steel tubes, probably going to need a few of those. And then, once all that's done, just keep making some solar panels. Oh wait, no. Not the solar cells yet. Let's get a few more computers first, then the solar cells. And since we've actually got ice and an oxygen generator, we can now build a floor here first, so that I don't have to try and jump out and fail over and over and over. Which is what would happen if I didn't. We can now fill up our hydrogen tanks and actually fly. Oh wait, I haven't gotten the ice out of the truck yet! <sighs> Alright, time to empty the truck. Let's do that before we get too excited about doing much else. I'm going to try to not subject you guys to too much of me shuttling stuff back and forth or mining. Particularly mining by hand, so we'll just jump ahead. Okay, so the truck's now empty. Let's have a look at how we're going to set up this solar tower. I want it to be a tower, and yeah, it might be nice to try and get it up on this mountain behind the base, but I don't think I've quite got the resources to do that, and that'll also make it very, very easy target. What I think I want to do instead is push it out this way, far enough that it can freely spin in two directions, so that I can get about, probably want to get at least 12 panels on there. So let's cut away this catwalk corner, 
is we're going to extend the catwalk so that we can actually climb the whole way up without using hydrogen. More for looks than for actual use. Let's grab a high. Oh, that's an oxygen bottle. Don't want that. Grab a hydrogen bottle. Fill it up. Ready to go. So that we can start building a bit more freely. Going to need a whole bunch of steel plates. That'll probably... That'll probably do it for now. Okay. We're going to need catwalks. We're going to need wheels, and I'll explain why shortly. And what else do we need? We need solar panels, and we're going to need rotors. Let's get in a position so we can actually plan this thing out a little bit. First off, we're going to need to do the catwalks. And that means wrapping them around past the refinery and out towards where this solar tower is going to sit. Shower stalls catwalks are perfect for this because there are so many options and all the pieces fit together really nicely. I think we're going to change the color of this thing soon. For now I'll just stick with it. And we need the corner because edges must have railings. Oh, H&S says so. We need to turn T off. Driving me nuts. Let's get rid of these bits because I can't figure out a way to get the catwalks around without them. This brings me to a point of almost ranting. I forget all of the time to turn T off, the auto rotate off. So I'd really love it if every time I reloaded the same game, it would keep my previous state. It'd be just such a nice quality of life feature. But we won't start a rant because that's not what we're doing. We're building. And now we've got to bring this out this way, so we're going to need the straight sections. And we'll build those. And of course, I say I'm not going to rant, and then we start getting the depressurization bug. Which is probably going to mean I'm going to need to drop the volume for you guys, so you don't have to tolerate putting up with that noise every time I place a block. And I don't have any more girders. We'll stop that at that point. What I want to also have to connect this up is... And this is why I've got the wheels. I want to use them as the main visual bit of connection between the tower and the main base. And unfortunately they actually need complete voxel clearance to be able to be placed so I'll have to drill a little bit out. I really like the build state of wheels as a form of a conduit for power. Uh, there are some really good mods that actually have power cables in them that I think work really nicely, but with vanilla, this actually works really nicely too. My plan is to have six panels on each arm, which means we're going to need a fair bit of clearance between the tower and any other obstacles around it, so that we don't end up with any nasty collisions or blockage in terms of rotation. So, will that be... Oh, I think I'll need to go a few more to give myself enough space for this tower. What's that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We're going to have six blocks out. That should, that should do the trick. Okay. Now, what I want to do is build our tower. We start with that block and we'll build the feet for this. Actually, I'm going to need to have I want to have this kind of on four feet, so if we uh, get rid of the wheels, as I don't need them now, add in the light armor slope, and take a brief pause for thinking and scratching my head, as I had an idea about how to put this together, and I think, hmm, nothing that's coming to mind is really looking like I remembered in my head at mending to look like. Oh. No, that's not what I want. Nope. 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 I think I want... Hmm. How is this gonna work? What I kind of have... Uh, we'll start on the post first. Whenever I get frustrated with one project, just move on to another and come back to it with a fresh start later. Oh, I don't have the girders for this. Dang it. Alright, gotta make some girders. 
I do need to place these down because I think I'm going to struggle to figure out how to build this without them. Uh, oh, we got some. Good. Perfect. In situations like this, I find with my designs, it can help to place the bits that you're confident that you know you need to get a bit of a better feeling of the space that you've got available for the rest of the stuff you're wanting to put there. Oh no, wait, I want wall for this bit. Not corner? Why was I saying corner? Wall. There we go. So we have a wall one there, then we have a corner here. Then we need stairs. Stair there. If you're making stairs like this, and you're doing it in vanilla and you're not using Shoustel's mod like I am here, there is an alternative. You can use the angled windows as 45 degree stairs and then the catwalks for the bits in between, but it can be difficult to stick together. The next bit is going to be... Oh, we'll go one higher and then we'll do the rotor actually. Stair there. Now, with the rotor... Well, that's not a rotor. With the rotor, to allow it to be able to spin, we can't use this stair block because you can see that it's actually two blocks high. So I'm going to sort of do something that looks a little bit funny and I'm actually going to place one of these stair blocks upside down. That way the rotor is going to be able to spin over the top of that and if we place that down we can then go back to our left stair, place that there and get a corner block and put it there. This should be able to freely spin over that and as long as we line this rotor up we would be able to walk all the way up to the top. Might look a bit funny when they're not aligned but at least it'll be functional if I ever want to have it up there. And I think it looks nicer anyway having a bit of scaffolding and having the ability to walk all the way up there I think looks pretty cool. Now we've got to get everything high enough up that the solar panels as they're being rotated can't hit anything and the solar panels are four blocks long so we should take this up at least five I think. That's going to be plenty high enough and I think yeah that's got to be far enough away from the mountainside now. On top of this we need to have a rotor for spinning each side. One there. One there. Now if I line that up right for the stairs, oh what's going to happen with the stairs? Before I get too excited um, I should probably check and make sure that the stairs are actually going to line up right so that we can walk all the way up to the very top. Oh, I think I might have done this right. I think I might have. Yeah. You do a double stair like that. Then if we get another corner. Place it there. Place this one there. And we can get some straight. One. There. 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 And then we need an end piece. The end piece can sit on top of this other rotor. Then we will have nice catwalks all the way up. Next up is our little arms. So I'm going to use one of these slopes like that on each rotor head. Pull it up by the half blocks. We need that to come out six blocks for the three on each side of the solar panels. That's then what I'll do is I'm also going to end with one of these. I was thinking about this tower and one of the downsides, particularly until I've welded it, is that it is awfully weak. But even once I've welded up all of this armor, it's still going to be reasonably weak. So in order to prevent any nasties directly shooting at the tower or shooting at the rotors missing and hitting the tower. Instead of that what I'm going to do eventually is potentially put some decoys out on the ends of these arms so that the decoys will be what's hit first not any of the critical components. 
So I'm pretty happy with the scaffolding. We'll need to finish those rotors before I can place any of the solar panels on there. Otherwise, all that will happen is that they'll drop down under the effects of gravity. So we'll leave them as is for now. We're about to run out of hydrogen. So let's go fill up our tank. And then with the tank filled up, we can then build on our four feet for the bottom of the tower while everything else is being refined. How's our stuff going? Not too bad. Production. We're getting onto the solar panels. Nice. Looks like we might even have enough for a complete panel as soon as we're done with the building, which is handy. So now let's get onto our legs because this thing looks very silly being completely unsupported out here. What I'd like to do is let's put that there, that there, and one here. And now we come to the point where I realize why I added all the stuff above. I'm actually building this exactly the way that I was doing right at the start. I probably should have just had more confidence and gone ahead with it. But now that I've got the extra pieces, I get a better feeling of what it's going to look like and can be more confident that I've got it the way that I'm hoping for this time around. So now we need to fill up the middle and... Oh, that's a half block. What am I doing? Why am I putting a half block down? I want a full block. I want to fill that up. I actually kind of like this tower made out of scaffolding, but I'm trying to think of what it's going to look like fully welded up for the reasons I spoke about earlier, where even a stray bullet against a bit of single plate scaffolding can destroy the whole thing and then that would lose all of our power and be an absolute disaster. One thing to note though, there are mods that have stronger scaffolding out there. So what I'm trying to do here... Ah, there we go. Ugh. What I'm trying to do here is drive everyone nuts with the fact that I can't use the rotation tools. Apparently. What I want is to make this tower look like it's actually possible to have it supported if you were to apply any sort of structural integrity to space engineers and it's something I do in a lot of my designs. This is very much not to say that I believe space engineers should have any sort of structural integrity. I think it would probably take away from some of the cool spaceship designs if we had to deal with that as well. And while it's a cool concept in a natural gravity field to have things that need to resist the gravitational forces that are pulling them down, it's nice enough to just do your builds that way. I like games that have structural integrity in them. I just don't think it's going to fit so nicely with Space Engineers. That being said though, I suspect if someone made a mod for it, I'd probably try it out. Although I suspect even if they did manage to get it working, oh boy, would it ever tank your performance to an incredible extent that would make it just horrible to attempt to play. But with what we've got now, it's kind of, I find it useful to think about structural integrity when you're designing anyway, and to try and come up with somewhat more varied ways of dealing with it. So I could have just built a central pillar down this thing, made it support by being deep into the ground and effectively cantilevered against that long pole that goes deep into the ground. But that wouldn't be so interesting. I could have just put some cross beams in there, but again, meh. So I thought, let's build four legs and do it that way. And it'll possibly look a bit better, but we'll have to see. I also didn't want to go out on the diagonals the whole way because I figured that would make them spread out way too far. So now our tower looks a bit better supported. There's still the spindly bit in the middle, but I don't think there's much we can do about that with the rotor. The only way I could think of changing that is if we made it three by three and rounded it. Then you could build blocks right up to the level of the rotor and then just have it spinning and have that small gap in between. But that seemed like an excessive amount of resources to try and use, so I decided not to do that. Let's finish off these catwalks.
Don't need to be flying right now, so let's drop down. There we go. We can now walk all the way around there and all the way up. Next thing we need to do is we need to build these rotors. As I mentioned earlier, if you start at, uh, attaching stuff to your rotors before they're built, gravity will have an influence on where they're going to spin to. So I didn't want to attach solar panels to them right now because then they'll end up flopping around and it actually makes it really difficult to place the next ones on there as they're swinging in and out of your zone of clicking or any better term for the place where you're going to put stuff. <laughs> Whoops. I'll get the rotor heads up to functional status, but I don't know if that actually matters. I suspect it doesn't, but it looks funny with the gap, so we'll do it anyway. As you might be noticing, my build style is, and my build order at that, is all about what's most fun to me or what I find most aesthetically pleasing at the time. I don't really think about doing things in the most efficient, crazy, super min-maxing sort of way, because Space Engineers really doesn't need it. You always end up with tons of stuff. Saying that, I don't want to build these rotor parts first. They use a lot of large steel tubes. They use, what, 24 large steel tubes. And I would have to make a lot of trips if I started welding them first, rather than putting the large steel tubes into the rotors and getting this thing at least a little bit functional first. I particularly don't want to spend those large steel tubes because we're kind of low on iron. At the very least we will be low on iron until I go and make one or probably two more trips down into the iron mine to collect a full load of it. I kind of try and balance off actually getting something that I don't have to then remove because it was temporary and getting a little too excited and building too much too fast. So we got one rotor finished. Let's get these other two finished. Then we can start adding on some extra solar panels. Since I think we've actually got enough that we could at least build one of these on properly. The way I want to build them on is a way I can't do yet because I forgot to bring the steel plates with me. Rah! And those of you who like the easy inventory mod are probably bashing your heads on the keyboard right now. But I forgot altogether that I wanted to build solar panels so it wouldn't have helped. Oops. So we'll grab the steel plates and construction components. Don't need those. Do need those but not that many. Let's bring some of these. It's not going to be enough for the whole panel but it's a good start. And we'll keep a close eye on our jetpack situation as I'm pretty sure I'd die from up here. It could end up being an entertaining view on the way down, but let's try and save that one for later. Just need a few more cells and that one will be finished. Let's place one ready to go on this side. I want to get one on each side fully constructed, hopefully while this day's still going. That way I can set up the timer blocks and programmable blocks and then head off down the mines during the night. Well, I feel like there's actually been some progress made on the base. In the next episode, we'll do our best to get this solar panel up and functional with the rotation script so that it's all working perfectly. And then I'll probably go diggy diggy hole and mine all day. There's all that and plenty more to come, so I'll see you then. <laughs>